Now before we get going, I don't think Union Pacific necessarily needs any introduction, but perhaps my foreign audience may be a little less familiar with them, so I'll happily give an abridged version. UP in its original form was founded in 1862, and they are still to this day one of the largest and most well-known American railroad companies. Their network is massive, and one of their big things, particularly in the mid-1900s, was, well, big things. Union Pacific Big Boy I don't think needs any introduction, and those were not the only large locomotives that Union Pacific chose to utilize on their lines. The owners of Union Pacific really felt a need to have the largest and most successful locomotives they could possibly get their hands on. It was a big point of pride for the railway, and one of these large locomotives was the 9000 series, which 9018 was one of. The 9000s were constructed between 1926 and 1930 by Alco, and they were huge. The steam locomotives were four 12 twos, four leading wheels, 12 driving wheels in a rigid frame, and two trailing wheels. They were big, big locomotives. And in fact, they had the longest rigid wheelbase in the world until the Soviet Union built the AA-20, which we've talked about before being terrible, but it was still a little bit bigger. But the 9000s weren't bad at all, and in fact, they were excellent locomotives for what they were designed for. Alco put a lot of innovative design ideas into the 9000s, one of which was actually the conjugated valve gear, which was invented by Sir Nigel Gresley, who's come up a few times when I've talked about UK locomotives. Alco obtained permission to use the gear and incorporated it into the 9000s, and they were the largest to ever use the Gresley gears. Additionally, while the third and fourth driving axles were originally designed to be blind, or flangeless, this proved unnecessary because of another innovation. Alco incorporated lateral motion devices on the first and sixth axles, which allowed them to slide two inches in either direction to help the locomotives navigate turns. Since they were in a rigid frame, turns would have been incredibly difficult, but with these motion devices, the 9000s proved to be incredibly useful in their day. Their only downside, as maintenance on it tended to be a pain, partially because of how massive they were, but also because they utilized an inside third cylinder, which was always a bit irritating to get to whenever maintenance was required. Outside of that though, they were great, except on the day that one of them decided it was a really good idea to explode. 9018 was a 9000 series, as we've already said. There's some conflicting reports over which year this happened, but the data I was fine from the official Union Pacific website was October 20th, 1948. Though some other sources say 1949, I feel more inclined to lead towards the official Union Pacific website over, well, anything else, really. It was their locomotive. Apparently, 9018 was operating at Upland, Kansas, and at the time had a crew of three, the engineer, the fireman, and a brakeman. A setup that's eerily similar to at least two other steam explosions I've talked about. As a locomotive moved forward, disaster struck. Ninety eighteen exploded with a colossal amount of force, blowing the boiler clean off, as well as destroying the cab. The engineer and fireman were killed instantly, though at the time, the brakeman was actually on his way down the ladder because he was concerned about the low water. And though he would also die later, he did live long enough to tell the officials, and I quote, we were low on water. Which I'm sure many of you already guessed. If you're wondering what caused it, yep, Crouchy. They did it again, again. Every time we talk about this and every time I go over the same thing. You have to keep water in your steam locomotives, guys. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The water level got low, the crown sheet got overheated, and when water reached it again, the water flashed into steam too quickly, increasing the pressure and causing a massive explosion that killed three men and completely destroyed a massive locomotive. And the post-investigation ruled that it was down to human error this time. Not only was 9018 just recently in the shots for routine service, but some of her water pump components actually survived the blast and were swapped into one of her sisters to test them. Tests showed that the components were all operating correctly, perfectly able to pump water into the boiler. So the only reason why there wasn't enough water in there was because the crew just didn't put enough in. Why would they have done this? Well, I've gone over that before. The only reason anyone's able to give is that it was likely to get more power out of the locomotive. You can build up more steam a bit faster if there's less water in it, but this is a very dangerous technique because you're putting less water in it. And 
there's less water, that raises the chance it'll get low enough that something like this can happen. Although in the end, it is impossible to know for sure that this is the reason why they let the water get that low, because they're not around to ask anymore. They died instantly, and it was completely avoidable. As for 9018, I couldn't find any direct confirmation as to what happened to her after the accident, though given the fact that this happened in 1948, and her class would be withdrawn in the early 50s, and mostly scrapped, I would hazard a guess that she was not rebuilt, but I couldn't find any conclusive source on that. But even if she was rebuilt, she would ultimately be scrapped within the next five years, just like the rest of her sisters, with the sole exception of number 9000. She is actually the prototype of the entire class, and she was preserved. Still sitting to this day at the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society's Museum at the Los Angeles County Fairplex in Pomona, California. She's an impressive sight to this day, and a solid piece of railroad history. So I'm really glad that she at least is still around. Additionally, and I can't stress this enough, guys, put water in your steam boilers. Because seriously, I just don't want you to die. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.